a joy it is to be in the presence of the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Jamani Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Uko uko hai. Amgeukia jirani yako mwambie Bwana Yesu yuko hapa. Ageukia mwingine anayekuamini zaidi mwambie Bwana Yesu yupo hapa. Amen. What a joy it is to be in the presence of the Lord. My name is Brian Moshigadi. I'm born again. Jesus Christ is Lord over my life. It is the honor of my life to fellowship and serve God here at the DCIKZ Shiloh Worship Center, Ramirema Campus, under Bishop Dr. Jimmy and Pastor Alice Kimani. We bless the Lord for all of you being in this place today. It is so good to see all of you. Thank you for braving the cold weather um, and the mud and um, the elements <laughs> to be in this place today. Please turn to your neighbor. Appreciate them. Tell them thank you for coming. All right, we want to go right into the word of God today, but just before we do that, we are going to keep celebrating the goodness of the Lord because next Sunday, come on, tell your neighbor, next Sunday, Shiloh at one, we are coming here to celebrate. The service starts at 9 a.m. Please come early. Come early. Let us have a grand time. You see, other people only see or have heard us, we know. See, the Lord has been kind. We are coming to just put another one. The Bible talks about Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12, is it? And it says, then Samuel took a stone and placed it between Mizpah and Shen. And he said, this far, Ebenezer. Hallelujah. And that's what we want to come to do on the 31st. You know, it could, on the 30th, next Sunday, you know, it could just pass like another day. And as I say, oh, Shiloh at one, yay. But the reason why we celebrate is because we want to be like Samuel and put a stone, a memorial, and say, this far, Ebenezer. Because the truth about that is that you say, this far, Ebenezer, you know the journey that remains, Ebenezer still. Hallelujah. And so we invite all of you to come. Please bring your family. Yes, there's going to be Sunday school for grade 1 to grade 8. So please bring your children. Don't be afraid. There's going to be Sunday school for them. If you have a child that is below grade 1, we're going to request you to sit together with them. All these things you'll hear in the announcements. But I'm saying them just so that we can move together in the name of the Lord. The service is from 9 to 12.30, so please come early that you might find good seating in this place in the name of the Lord. We are also going to be redeeming our pledges and bringing our gifts and seed and um, contribution plugging in to building the cathedral and we bless the Lord for that as well. The good Lord that is the giver of seed that he will do it for you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Today we want to speak and my, uh, my, my topic, my working topic or my working title was do you not remember? Do you not remember? In Mark chapter 8, I'm going to read a couple of portions of scripture. Today we're going to read quite a chunk of scripture. Mark chapter 8, and the Bible says in verse 1, I'm reading the New King James, the feeding of the 4,000. It says, and in those days, the multitude be, being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said to them, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them away hungry to their own houses, they will faint on their way, for some of them have come from very far. Then his disciples four answered and says, how can one satisfy these people with bread here in the wilderness? I want you to note those words in verse 4. How can one satisfy these people with bread here in the wilderness? Verse 5, he asked them, how many loaves do you have? And they said, seven. He commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and gave thanks and broke them and gave them to his disciples and set them before them, and they set them before the multitude. Continue saying, verse 7, they also had a few small fish, and having blessed them, he said, to set, he said to set them also before them. So they ate, they ate and were filled, and they took up seven large baskets of leftover fragments. Verse 9, now those who had eaten were about four a thousand, semi four thousand, and he sent them away. Immediately, got into the boat with his disciples and came to the region of Dalmanatha. Verse eleven. Then the Pharisees came out and began to dispute with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven and testing him. But he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, "Why does this generation seek?" a sign. Assuredly, I say to you, no sign shall be given to this generation. Verse 13, and he left them and getting into the boat again, he departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread. Some have forgotten. And they did not have more than one loaf which was with them in the boat. 
Verse 15, then he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, Is it because we have no bread? Verse 17, but Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, Why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes, do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves of, the, of bread for the 5,000, how many baskets full of fragments did you take up? And they said to him, Twelve. He also said, Also when I broke the seven for the 4,000, the the seven for the 4,000, how many large basket fulls of fragments did you take up? And they said, seven. And so he said to them, how is it you do not understand? May the Lord add the, the blessing to the reading of his word. We're going to talk about do you not remember? That's my working title. Of course, you can call it any other thing as we proceed. We're going to just go by looking at it. By this time, Jesus is doing his work of ministry. He has gone on and on. He's been doing great things. If you read by the time we're getting to Mark chapter 8, and Mark is it's short, it's compacted, it has a lot of immediately's and suddenly's. If you read the book of Mark, you'll find a lot of immediately, a lot of suddenly. It's not as detailed as the book of Luke or even Matthew before that. Mark is very compacted. And so by the time you get into Mark chapter 8, there's a lot of things that have already happened in the ministry of Jesus Christ. He has already been going about, in the summary that scripture gives us, he has been going about doing good. Jesus has been going about doing Today we're going to, it's a class, we're going to remember, so we're going to talk. So Jesus has been going about doing good things by the time we're getting to where we are. By this time, in Mark chapter 8, Jesus has already fed the 5,000, which is a story that is more common to most of us, okay? The feeding of the 5,000, and he used five loaves and two fish, all right? And so he has already done that. If you go back, I think, to Mark chapter 6, you'll find that story. We'll not get into it because of time. But now, a couple of um, moments later, a couple of, day, a couple of days later, now this is the story that we are met with. Jesus is feeding yet another multitude. Not 5,000, but 4,000 this time. It's a smaller multitude. It's, a lot of the things are the same. They don't have food. There's fish. There's bread involved. But I want you to remember that this is a smaller multitude than the one that he had fed before. So let's try and break it down just a little bit. The verse 2, it says that these disciples, um, this multitude was great. 4,000 people. 4,000 people is great. If you are here when we were launching Shiloh last year, we were not 4,000 people there, yet it looked like a great multitude. I don't even think we were 2,000 people. So 4,000 people is a big crowd of people, a big multitude. And Jesus was speaking to these 4,000 people who had come to him. And the Bible says they had nothing to eat. They were out there. They had nothing to eat. And Jesus in verse 2 says, I have compassion on the multitude. I want you to note that the opening words of Jesus Christ are that I have compassion on the multitude. It was not the suggestion of one of the disciples. Unlike the other story, it was not the suggestion of the disciples. It was Jesus' own initiative. It was him moved with love and compassion that decided to do something about their situation. It was not somebody that prompted him. It was not somebody in the crowd that positioned himself in a manner likely to suggest that they're going to drop of hunger. No, Jesus said himself, I have compassion on the multitude because he's reasoning and said, they have now continued with me three days and they have nothing to eat. If I send them away hungry to their own houses, for sure, they're going to faint along the way. So we're going to look for something for them. But his disciples, his disciples are saying, how can one satisfy these people with bread here in the wilderness? I want you to note that when Jesus fed the 5,000 people, the situation or the location was not much different. Okay, it was still out there, it was not in near a kitchen, it was not near a bakery of bread. Okay, they were still out there, that's why it was important that there was a young man that had carried his lunch of five loaves and two fish. Kijana Barubaro alikuwa mejua kuji check, amejipangia safari yake, five loaves and two fish. You know, it must have been a young man, only a young man can think to carry five loaves for themselves. Okay, the old people will carry one loaf and think to sub to, to, to subdivide kwa awa to kumi. You know how sometimes you go to, when I was young, we used to go to the butchery with my mom. And my mom would say, Nikatiye quarter. Nikolai, quarter? Quarter to kwatuka kumi kwa nyumba, what do you mean quarter? And I said, Manyama ni a taste peke yake. And I know some of you in this house are like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> this young man had carried for himself five loaves and two fish. 
And that is what Jesus used, the means that Jesus used, multiplied it, akaikata hivi kwa hivi, akai multiply, ikaweza ku feed 5,000 people. Now the disciples, it was not very long, but they had forgotten. We said today we are asking ourselves which question? Do you not remember? The disciples had forgotten that Jesus Christ himself had done something like this. He had fed and satisfied. Not only fed, but satisfied. The proof for you that have your own homes, the proof for satisfaction is that there is leftover food. The proof that there is more than enough is that something has been left over. That's why it's an encouragement when the Bible says that there is grace for every single day, that his masses are new every morning, that try as you might, you cannot completely um, finish up the supply of God's mercy over your life. There is more than enough. His grace is more than sufficient. There is enough food in your house that has been left over tells you that you have more than enough. Kama ukipika kapaketi yako ya unga, haupiki yote inakwishi ya ukondani, na mkipika mnaimenya mnararua nyote inakwisha, hapo wapabaki chochote, no na advertisement huko za Kavagara vinyo wanafanyanga yo unga inaisha hivi ugali imeisha kun saani inalambwa na watoto mnaona hiyo kitu it's not enough and you just can't have enough but when you have made food in your house you have made some ugali even when you are broke you've made some ugali but there's still some kaunga left you have more than enough and just to consider the goodness of God I want you to start thinking about it we're going to be present in this class today consider that when you have made rice for your family even when you have come to the end there's still something left do you consider that widow that fed the prophet is it, was it the widow of Zarephath when she was there preparing and she was saying in my house there's only a little left I will prepare just some cake and then we will eat it and then after that we will die that one did not have enough but these disciples, they had seen God do something called more than enough. A supply called more than enough. He had fed them and there were basketfuls that remained. Enough for every one of them. Now, these same disciples that have seen and witnessed, they had eaten that food. They carried it for themselves. But they have forgotten. These same people that had experienced the power of God firsthand had quickly forgotten. Such that the question that they are asking to Jesus Christ is as if they were not there at all. How can one satisfy these people with bread here in the wilderness? And Jesus, full of compassion again, because you can tell by his response, he does not tell them, you foolish, foolish, forgetful people. No, Jesus looks at them and he looks at the kind of people that they are. I'm encouraged by the word of God. Is it Psalm 139 or is it Psalm 103? That talks about how he, he remembers that we are dust. He knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. He does not deal with us as, as we ought to be dealt with. He remembers that he, he is God and we are not. And that's what he does with the disciples. He asks them, as if ignoring the whole conversation, asks to them, how many loaves do you have? And they said, they have seven. And of course, the miracle continues to unfold, that he commands them to sit in groups, and as they sit in groups, he sets bread before them, and the fish, the, the few small fish that were there as well, he sets before them and gives to them. Now, there are these people called Pharisees, and we've talked about Pharisees here in this service before, many times before. And these Pharisees are here, and they are complaining, and they are complaining, and they are coming to Jesus. They are trying to pin him with a word. They are trying to ask Jesus, Kwani, show us a sign. We want to know. As if the things that had already happened were not already signs. As if the, 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 the things that they had already experienced, because they were there through the ministry of Jesus, they had seen it. Many times when I read this portion of, script, of scripture or when I read places where the people are asking for a sign, I think, what sort of people were these Pharisees? And then every time God stops me in my questioning spree and asks me what kind of a question, what kind of a person are you also? Because how many of you, just like this, the, the disciples and the Pharisees and maybe like myself, how many of you also find yourself in such a place where the Lord has done something for you many times before and then when you're faced with a different situation that requires the hand of help of God, you also ask, is it possible for me to get out of such a place? Is it possible for something to be done about my situation? The same you and I that have experienced the blessing of God firsthand, 
You and I, in the first service when we were starting to pray, we remembered that the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, then God breathed into the man, and the man came alive, a living soul. That same breath that was breathed into man, into Adam back in the day, is the same breath that continues to sustain us to this day. The Bible reminds us in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 that by faith we know that the worlds were formed or framed by the very word of God. That same word that was spoken by God when he was forming the things is the same word that holds things in place as they are. That same word, that same hand that moved in, the, in, in your favor is the same hand that is still holding things in place where they are right now. But many times, just like the Pharisees, we're asking God, I need a sign. I need you to show me that you're here. I, I was glad when, when Pastor Angeshu was leading us, when the song as we were declaring Huniachi, because we need to sing it and sing it and remind ourselves that the promise of God still stands, even though sometimes you might feel like you're alone. Because you're not. He has made his promise, and when the person who has promised you is a trustworthy person, you believe that word, come with me. Bwana Sifiwe. Tell your neighbor, it is God that has promised. Turn to another and tell them, it is God that had promised. And you see, when Jesus is refusing the claim of the demands, or the, when he's refusing the demand of the, of the Pharisees, it is not because he could not have done it. It is just like the devil. The devil is telling himself during the temptations, Luke chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4, when he's, um, when he's tempting Jesus Christ, he's telling him, you do this thing. If you're the son of God, tell this stones to turn into bread. If you're the son of God, if you're the son of God, it's not that he could not. It's only that he knows that this is not coming at it to test that truly this is, this is my part. No. It is just because you know that even this person that is asking me these questions, like the Pharisees, they will not be convinced even by this kind of thing. That we need to remember constantly that there is a God in heaven who is involved in the affairs of men and if he has done it before i don't need to receive a special sign i don't need to to hear him thundering in my house and saying this is the voice of the lord you know many times you we are like god please give me a sign i ask to myself if god were to come the way we expect him to come sometimes god could you now see to money oh jehovah niko mahali nimefinywa I don't think any of us were able to, were, would be able to contain what we ask for. God in his mercy knows that. And he's talking to them about, he continues in that, in that statement and he's um, speaking to the disciples. You see, one of the things, one of the questions, Jesus goes on a, on a questioning spree. Let's just go back to that again. He goes on a questioning spree with the disciples and he asks them a couple of questions. In the past about three weeks, I, in my own personal study, I've been learning about the questions of Jesus Christ and um, the questions that he asked throughout the Gospels, throughout the Word. That's what I've been learning. And it's been so interesting to learn that God uses questions not because he does not know the answer, but because he wants to allow you to be an active participant in the process of your salvation, redemption, those things, deliverance. He's asking you questions. That's that your memory can be jogged, kidogo. Because what we do is that we forget as human beings. One as if you. As I was studying, I actually found an interesting um, uh, truth that the first words, the very first recorded words of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in the Bible were questioned. It was a question. When he was found at the temple at the age of 12, the first recorded words of Jesus Christ were like, why are you looking for me? That is the opening, those are the opening words of Jesus Christ in scripture. He starts by asking a question. And so he continues that. You see, it jogs your mind. As I was reading that day, I thought to myself, pause for a minute and we were sharing it with Pastor Paul, just asking, why do I look for Jesus? If Jesus were to be asking me the same question today, why are you looking for him? Why did you come, beloved? If I were to ask you that question, if Jesus were to stand today and ask you in your heart, why are you looking for him? What are the kinds of questions, that you're, the answers that you're going to come up with? So Jesus goes on a spree, and I want us to just go back to it. You see, they have gone into the boat after the Pharisees have asked questions, and Jesus has ignored their, 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 the trap they're trying to lay for him. They go into the boat, and they're seated. The disciples are hit by a truth. And the problem is in verse 14, it says, now the disciples had forgotten to take bread. They only had one loaf. Sema matata kwa kweli. Masha kama ku. Mumeacha lunch. Na ilikuwa imeprovidiwa. Have you ever prepared for a safari? A road trip and you had snacks? 
And then all of a sudden, you have arrived in the vehicle, na mkombali, na nyumbani, and then you remember, alas, the bag that had the snacks, the bright yellow bag that was strategically placed at the door was left. It is a crisis. You start to wonder, do we go back? Will it be more fuel for us to go back? Ama, what do we do? Do we go into the supermarket and buy? Maybe we don't have any food. Maybe it was sponsored. <laughs> This is the crisis. Don't think the disciples were crazy. It was a big problem. Mkate. Mkate kwanza wa miujiza. Si mkate tu. Mkate wa miujiza jamaneni. So disciples are like, now they had forgotten the bread and they are worried. It is the one thing that is occupying their mind. Forget that the master, the creator of the world, the one who has done the miracle is right there with them. Forget that. They are just like, tumewacha mikate. Tumewacha mikate. Peter, tumewacha mikate. John, tumewacha. Tumewacha mikate. So Jesus is asking them, he, he speaks to them, he says, take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. Jesus is using language that is used in baking. And then they are reasoning within themselves in verse 16. You see, is it because we have no bread? You see, they're saying to themselves, our angelish Jesus, it's like, I'm a Jew to me at does he think we're irresponsible people? Has, does he know? Has, what is it? But blessed be God. Jesus, being aware of it, it says in verse 17, why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not perceive? Do you not understand? And this is the line of questioning that Jesus picks it up with us again this morning. He says to them, do you not perceive or understand? Is your heart still hardened? As if Jesus were to ask them, after all we've been through together, do you still not perceive? Is it possible that after everything I have done, your heart is still hardened? Is it possible that you have eyes still, after everything we've gone through, you have eyes and you do not see? Is it possible, my people, that having ears, you still have not heard? After everything we have been through, is it possible? that you do not remember? Is it possible? And that's the question that the Lord would be piercing our hearts with this morning. He's asking, after all we have been through, my sons and my daughters, is it still possible that your heart is still hardened? Is it possible that you still think about lack and disappointment? Is it possible that you still have a part in you that believes that there is nothing that can be done about your situation or the situation of your family? Is it possible after everything we've been through. Do you not remember? Was it not you I was with? I don't know about you. Have you, do you know people, friends? Do you have, okay, maybe not friends, but do you know people in your life who you meet them and when you meet them, you have a good time. You talk, just have to surface conversations. You're not at a deep friend, so it's very small talk, but you know, you're cordial with each other. And then you don't see them today and then tomorrow when you meet, Simulisha ongea jana. So sasi ya mekua an acquaintance at least. Mkipatana unenda kumisani, hey ni aje? And then this person acts like they have never met you before. Do you know that kind of people? If you don't know them, maybe you are those people. It could be possible. <laughs> you're meeting somebody and you're thinking, I have to introduce myself again to you. You're, you're standing across the room in a place full of strangers and you look across and you see somebody you like. Not somebody that you like, somebody that you know. <laughs> Somebody that you know and you go across to them and you, at least you're thinking, eh, I had thought I'm going to be in this place by myself. At least I'm on a familiar face. Then you end across. And you say, ah, sasa! Oh, poor, I'm like, eh? Moi zimwa. You're excited to see this person. I would imagine that, is the, that same disappointment only comes close. I think that's the only thing that can come close to what Jesus Christ is feeling in his heart. Because he had not talked about it. He had not questioned the disciples before when they asked, how is it possible to satisfy people in the wilderness with four loaves? How is it possible? I would imagine he was disappointed, but he didn't say anything. But then it continues to carry on, and Jesus unleashes a series of questions to them. And I would imagine those same questions would be the same ones that he will unleash against your doubt, your questioning, your fear, your disbelief in the house today. And he's asking those questions, and I'm going to read them again. He says to them, do you not perceive or understand? Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes, do you not see? It is you we've been through this journey of salvation together with. Shiloh, we've been with you one year, guys. One year. Is it possible that you still do not remember? 
Bwana Yesu asifiwe. See, the beautiful thing about this line of questioning is this. That Jesus Christ is not asking them in condemnation. He's just perplexed that it is possible for us to still hold on to our unbelief like that. There are some of us who hold on to unbelief like it is a badge of honor. You just don't want to be. We have, been, we have drunk at the table of the world for so long that we actually believe the lie that says, and it is these self-help teachers and whatever, that most of the times will tell you, if you expect less, you will get disappointed less. So, don't expect. We forget the truth about scripture that says the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. So, which one are you going to believe? You see, every time, beloved, every time you come before the Lord, you have options. You decide what you're going to believe. He has not hidden his word somewhere in Auko Numa such that you can do nothing about it. He has placed it openly openly, and then on top of giving us his written word, he has released freely his Holy Spirit that can lead us, teach us all truth, that can remind us of Jesus Christ, such that now you get to make the decision, will I believe God or will I believe what is going around? I know there are people out there who are saying that Christians are just people who they don't engage the truth, they don't want to see the facts, they have just shut themselves in a cocoon. These people who believe that kind of lie. But you get to decide the life that you're going to live. Are you going to believe Jesus? Whose report in the song we used to sing, are you going to believe? Please help me preach to your neighbor. Turn to them, tell them, neighbor. Whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? Jesus is asking them in the last question there, he says to them, do you not remember? Allow me to submit to you that a lot of the worries and faults and failures and fears and troubles that we face as believers come to us simply for the reason that we do not remember. The disciples were worried that they had not carried bread. They were worried before that that they had this multitude of people to feed and they did not have the resource because they did not remember that Jesus Christ himself, this same one that they are with right now, had fed 5,000, a bigger number than what they had right now. They had forgotten. A lot of our fears, worries, and anxieties come to us because we simply do not Remember, a lot of the times that we fall into sin and give into temptation is because we simply do not remember the saving hand of God. We simply do not remember. We allow ourselves to forget and how convenient it must be for the devil that he spurs us on and continues to encourage us to forget. Instead of bringing to you what Jesus did, he brings to you the need in front of you, magnifies and amplifies it. Such that 4,000 people seems bigger and more impossible to feed than 5,000 people. Is that really possible? Just simple mathematics. But doubt, that thing called doubt that the enemy introduced in the very first beginning, at the fall of man in Genesis chapter 3, which we'll look at in just a, meet, in just a bit, that he introduced to them. He's introducing doubt. It's among the first things that he came to the people with. He starts by asking the woman, did God really say. The moment she begins to make room for that question in her heart, she begins to lose sight of what was really said by God. And so the instruction of God starts to look like a suggestion. Just because of doubt. Doubt is a powerful thing. The Bible talks about it in the book of Hebrews chapter 4. It says that those people of old, Akina Israel, the nation, and the people of God from the beginning, they, did not, were not, they were not benefited or did not benefit from God and his word because when they received it, they did not mix it up with faith. In other words, they were doubtful. You receive the word of God, you have an ingredient called faith, you have an ingredient called doubt. You get to decide what you're going to use in the preparation of whatever you're doing. See, when you're cooking, you're the one who decides. Just because you have all the spices, I'm not talking about any tribe, please. I'm not just mentioning any tribe. I'm just giving an example in preaching. Oh, I don't want people to come after me. Eh? Just because you have all the spices in your drawer doesn't mean that you just put all of them in your sufuria. Ukona ingredients zote, ukona waru, ukona carrot, ukona nyanya, ukona kabichi, ukona... I manage you to me zote. Ama na mnagani watu wa mungu. Sijataja watu mimi. See? Siku ya nyama sio lazima unatia kabichi kwenye sufuri ama namna gani. Sio lazima unaweka waru kila mahali sasa una <laughs> You 
you decide. You decide what ingredients you're going to use. Hama namna gani? Ukiamua kutumia kila kitu wazipelekani? Ni mimi ninawaambia sasa azipelekani. Najua umekuwa ukipika hivyo azipelekani. Zini nimesimama hapa kwa madhabahu. Ninasema azipelekani. <laughs> you decide. So if you, you you have been given options. I have given you life and death. Please choose life. God says. But if you decide to take life and death and put them all in the same pot, it just doesn't work. Light and darkness do not mix. You either decide I'm going to take light or I'm going to take darkness. You don't mix them. I have faith, I have doubt. If I put all of them in, it won't work. I get to decide what I'm going to use every day. You wake up in the morning and you ask yourself this question, just who will you be? Will I be a full-time believer? Or will I go outside and then deal with every case as I find it? When you decide ahead of time, you're better for it. Even with temptation, if you decide I'm going to run, I'm going to flee, before the temptation comes, you're ready. You have your running shoes on. When you leave the house, you're ready. Ikitokea, mekua wiki ya maandamano watu wa mungu? Mepatikana uko nje kwenye maandamano? Bwana wa mwalinda, nashukuru mungu wa meonekana hapa siku ya leo. Lakini ile siku yenye unajua unaenda taona kunaweza kuwa na maandamano. Let me give an example with Pastor Joy. This past week I think on Friday one of the those hot maandamano days she was supposed to go and do an assignment in the heart of the city somewhere in Kamukunji or was it Isli. Anyway. When Joy was getting ready that day, she had that truth in the back of her mind. She was not all dressed up as if she's going to a wedding. Unavaa viatu ambazo unajua kiki nini ukiwa umetembea unasikia pu unaweza uka chomoka sio unavaa viatu vilivyo vile vya wadada you prepare yourself you dress for what it is that is coming you decide ahead of time hawanze kutafuta ati unanunua viatu sasa hiyo umesikia magruneti zinapigwa huku na tia gas hata uoni viatu tanunua vya mwana ume jamani kwa kweli moshi umejaa umetanda kwenye anga but when you leave the house you decide what it is you're coming with so you decide ahead of time what am i going to use today Am I going to tap into faith or into doubt? You don't put all of those things into the basket. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Jamani Bwana Yesu asifiwe. A lot of our anxieties and troubles and depression comes from the fact that we simply do not remember. Psalm chapter 103 verse 1. The Bible says, "Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me." Bless his holy name. He says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. David remembers. In fact, after that, in the very next verse, verse 3, David begins to line out what the benefits are. He says, he forgives all your iniquities. He lines them out. He's talking about what the Lord has done for him. What are the benefits of the Lord to you today? I want to give you a minute. I want to give you a minute and just think about what the benefits of the Lord are for your life. Since the day you gave your life to Jesus or knew about him, what are the benefits he's had? I know it's just a verse that we read many of the times, but I want you to think about it. And most of the times we use this generic benefit. We say, oh, I have been promised a home in heaven. It is true. We say, oh, I've been given life everlasting. It is true. My sins have been forgiven. It is true. But when I sit down, my sins have been forgiven. When I start to think about it, is different from when I just say my sins have been forgiven. Because now my sins have a name. I know what has been forgiven. It might not be what you guys have been forgiven of, but for me, it means something when I say my sins have been forgiven. When I say he satisfies, he fills my mouth with good things. Good for you may not be good for me. So when I say that verse and I remember his benefits, I remember the good that he has filled my mouth with. So that I can say, so that my youth renewed is like that of an eagle. I remember his benefits. Please tap your neighbor to the left, to the right, tell them neighbor, remember his benefits. Oh, remember his benefits. Remember his benefits. Remember his benefits. Remember his benefits. Now, you might be here and you're struggling to remember his benefits. Let me give you one, just one point, and then we're going to be done. If you are struggling to remember his benefits, it will do you good to consider his greatness. Consider his greatness. What does that mean? Remember, we're talking about remembering, remember exactly who you're dealing with. When you consider God, you are trying to remember who you're dealing with. You think about, Ninani uyu ninadilnae. 
When you are leaving your house, I want you to think about your practical, everyday, ordinary life. You don't deal with every person exactly the same. If somebody outside the house told you, Nipatie miyatano, please, do you just hand it over to them? No. But if I text you and I tell you, please, nsa idena miyatano, turn to mia. Your answer should be yes. <laughs> I'm just playing. Just playing. But you consider the relationship you have with somebody. Kuna mtu mwenye atakwambia nitumie 1,000, please, urgently. Kuna shangai urgently. Ukona audacity ya kuitisha kitu urgently. Kwa hii ekonomia ya Kenya kuna urgently. Wewe wacha mchezo. Hata 500 zina ya urgently. Lakini kuna mtu atakutexta kuambie, uko na 25k unaweza nisaidia nayo. You will move heaven and earth to give them 25,000. There are some of the people you'll actually even consider when you kakope mahali ndio msaidie nayo. Because you have a relationship with them. You consider exactly who it is that you're dealing with. If you're struggling to remember his benefits, if you're struggling to remember him, consider who you're dealing with. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Isaiah chapter 40. Let's go to that. Isaiah chapter 40. The Bible says, Isaiah chapter 40, I'm reading from verse 12. It talks about uh, the greatness of God. It says, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? He has measured heaven with a span. He has calculated the dust of the earth in a measure. He has weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in balance. Think about what the word is saying. That God has taken mountains and hills and placed them on a scale and he's weighing them down. So that these ones that are heavier are mountains. These ones that are less heavier are heals. He has done those things himself. He has taken the, the waters and he has measured them in the hollow of his hand. Think about the overwhelming waters like the Indian Ocean and the rest that you cannot just walk through or swim through. He has measured them in the hollow of his hand. That is the great God we are talking about. It says who has directed the spirit of the Lord or as his counselor taught him. Has there been somebody wise enough to talk or to teach God at how to be a better God? None. And there will never be. That's the kind of God that we are dealing with. It continues to ask, with whom did he take counsel? Who instructed him or taught him the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? Our answers are constantly, nobody. Nobody. As you answer nobody, you are remembering exactly who you're dealing with. Your faith is being stirred up to remember exactly who you're dealing with. I want you to think if the disciples, as they were seated there, asking themselves, is it possible to satisfy such a great multitude in the wilderness? If they had started to consider who they are dealing with, they would have answered that question themselves. They would have been seated there and saying, is it possible to satisfy such a multitude in the wilderness? And then as they start to consider, they ask themselves, who is it that has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Who is it that has calculated the dust of the earth with um, in a measure? Who is it that has done all these things? And here it is this one that is right here with us. Ah, for sure he can feed 4,000 people. Who was it that fed 5,000 with only five loaves and two fish? Remember his benefits. As you start to consider exactly who it is that you're dealing with, your life begins to change. Bonasifiwe. You start to be different. Your prayer life becomes different. When you're praying, you're not praying as if you are defeated, pushed into a wall. There's a certain kind of boldness. On Friday when we were finishing the prayer first, uh, the 21 days of prayer and fasting, Mr. Millicent was telling us, turn to your neighbor, tell them, I came in as a cat, but I'm living as a lion. And people were excited saying those things. But have you seen that meme? That when you're going, me, when I'm going into prayer, you look like a meek, rained on chicken. When you're coming out of prayer, your faith has been stirred up. You remember exactly who it is that you're dealing with. It does something when we remember. The disciples would have saved themselves a lot of anxiety and fear and worry and questions if they had only remembered to consider exactly who they were dealing with. I remember an example, and I'll give it again, that the bishop has given to us many, many times before. It says there was a certain man who had a, um, there was a certain young man who was waiting for a bus, and he decided to wait for a bus somewhere. Like in between, there's a bus at Mire there's a stage at Mirema, there's a stage down there at um, Biz. In between, there is no stage, at least not officially anyway, that we know about. So, alikuwa nangojea gari hapa katikati ya mirema na base. Where he was standing, there was a man that was there. 
And this man kept telling him, young man, if you're waiting for the bus, you need to walk all the way down there. The bus does not stop here. And he says, no, let me wait here. And he says, no, 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 young man, you will miss the bus. The bus does not stop here. It only stops at the designated areas. It will only stop there. Right now, before the bus comes, you still have time. Please walk all the way there. And the young man says, no, no, I'm going to wait for it here. And they continued until the old man decided, oh, that's why I'm going in a few moments later, the bus came and the bus stopped exactly where the young man was and the young man was getting on. As he was getting on, the old man that was seated there was asking, young man, how did you know the bus was going to stop here? And the man said, because the bus driver is my father. When you consider exactly, so what does mama kuni chukua? Atazimama, mbona nitumie nguvu kwenda kule kwa stage na baba amesema hata nisimamie hapa. When you consider exactly who you're dealing with, we we'll, we stop wasting a lot of our energy. Kuna kukimbia ingie tunakimbia watu wa Mungu. Unatafuta kutafuta ingine, kutafuta si mbaya, lakini kuna kutafuta ingine unatafuta umechoka, umeisha nguvu, hauna uwezo, na ni kwa sababu uliambiwa ngoja hapa, wewe unaenda kukimbia, watu walisema zinapatikana kule. Unakimbia uko na wao. Au juu wewe wao wako na usiano gani? Wewe unajua wewe ni nani bwana? Mungu amekwambia ni ngoje. Tell your neighbor you must remember. As you are remembering, you are considering the greatness of God. The Bible continues to talk about him. It continues to talk about who it is. It's when you consider, by the way, the greatness of who it is that you are dealing with. When you remember who you are dealing with. I said it changes your prayer life. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Verse 27 of the same Isaiah 40 says, Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, saying, My way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God? And he's asking that same question, Have you not known, have you not heard, that it is the Lord, the everlasting God, is the creator of the ends of the earth. He never faints and he's never weary. His understanding is unsearchable. God is asking the same question to Israel that he's asking to us today, that he would ask the disciples many years years later. He's asking, have you not known? Have you not heard? Is it possible that you might have forgotten exactly who you're dealing with, beloved? His understanding is unsearchable. The everlasting God is the creator of the ends of the earth. It changes my prayer life when I have considered him. When I remember him, I stop to ask these questions. Oh, my way is hidden from the Lord. Oh, my just claim is passed over by my God. The Lord would not forget. In fact, he's, we've actually said it in the words that we were led today, that mother and father may forget me. My friends might leave me alone. But the Lord, he has promised he will never leave me or forsake me. What a joy it is for us to remember. The Bible talks about it in Isaiah. It says that a mother, can a mother forget a child that is suckling at its breast? It is highly unlikely. But it says, but even though in the very unlikely event that a mother might, even though a mother might do that, I, my people, will not forget you. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. So it removes this place for us going to God in the place of prayer. Like, oh God, you have forgotten me. Oh God, you don't want to. God, you have taken too long. Sit down. Wait on the Lord. As you consider his greatness, your prayer changes. Your worship becomes something that is watchworthy. Other people look at you and they desire that song that God has put in your mouth. God has put in your mouth. The Bible says in Isaiah, is it Isaiah chapter, chapter 4? No, in Psalm chapter 40. It says that he has put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise unto our God. It says many will see it. Many will see the song. Buona sefiwe. Because you have considered whom you have believed, your life has become different. Now I know you could sit there and say, ah, that sounds like a lot of wishful thinking. But there is the promise. The person that has promised you, changes. It de the way you act or interact with the person that has promised you whatever they have promised, it determines how you're going to act. How do we interact with our God? We remember. Just remember his benefits. Has he done something for you? Oh, I know he has because you're here breathing. If nothing else, his breath of life 
is still inside your lungs. Something has been done for you, beloved. There is something that the Lord has done. Remember that so long as I still have breath, there is still plans in store for me. It is an exciting thing for me to remember. There are plans and they are being made by God. Hallelujah. There are plans and they are being made by God. If I tell you, Usijali, Nina Kupangia Kaki to Usijali, you know you might be excited because I'm your pastor and you're thinking my pastor is planning for me, but I'm limited in resources, beloved. Oh, let me say it. Right now, here, where I am, I'm limited in resources. But when God says to you, Nakupangia Kaki, I felt that one. <laughs> when God says to you, Nakupangia Kakitu, the limitless God, the Bible describes him in the book of Job. He says he's a God of limitless possibilities and miracle surprises that cannot be counted. This is the one that we are considering. Remember him. This same one that has fed 5,000 before, I for sure, 4,000 has him shindi. Consider exactly who it is that you're dealing with. Turn to your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, Consider God. Consider. Turn to another and tell them, neighbor, neighbor. Remember, him. remember him. Hallelujah. If the Lord has done anything for you, anything at all, you sit down and remember, he that has done it then can do it now. Another point I'm going to add to you, if you're struggling, number two, we said the first one we said, consider his greatness. The second point is this, if you're struggling with remembering him, surround yourself with people that have believed or seen God. Surround yourself with people that have experienced God. Find them out. That's why we come to church. We come to church to worship the name of Jesus, but we also come, because imagine unge kuna kuja service, una kuja unapata haya. It is very discouraging. So that's why next Sunday when you feel like not coming to church, you must come. You are an encouragement to me. Nashindwa kwani watu waliachana na Mungu ama rapture ilitendeka nikaachwa ama kwani kulienda kwani watu waliacha kuamini kwani all those questions save me all that trouble please come to church. <laughs> all right. We come so that we encourage one another. The Bible says do not be in the habit is it Hebrews 10 and 25 do not be in the habit of um neglecting the place of fellowship as some are in the habit of doing but come together encourage one another as we look forward to that day kuna siku ambayo inakuja ambayo sauti ya baragumu tutaisikia jamani nasi tutapaa mawinguni kumlaki bwana yesu kabla siku hiyo ije lazima tukae tukikumbushana kwanza kuna siku inakuja have you ever realized that when you're going through a challenge by yourself it is more difficult than when you're going through the exact same challenge with other people there's somebody I watched on social media the other day and was saying, Hea kiangalia hivi anaona mataxis ziko juu. Anasikia hata wa Kenya wengine wanasema hata kwao ziko juu. Hati anasipatanga a lot of peace. Ama hiya kumbe si mitu na kato. But I want you to imagine if everybody would be saying the economy is so good. Hey mambo yiko mazuri, taxis imeshuka. Wo kiangalia pay slip, unaona zako zilikato tu vile vile. Si unanza kukimbiza hata utajua ofisi za kiarezi kwa hapi. When you're going through a personal challenge, unspoken, when you're going through an unspoken need, it bites you more than when you're going through something together with everybody in your family. Unangalevi, unona, hata ule ya meumizwa, hata ule ya konanja, siko peke angu. Badu ni konanja, lakini at least siko peke angu. High school tulikuwa tuna celebrate sana ile kupigwa ya mkiwa darasa mzima na wewe ndio ulikuwa unapiga kelele Kile mwalimu anaingia anasema all of you kneel down kneel down right now kneel down kneel down prefect uko happy do you have a list no but i know the, Brian is the one who was making noise like me I was, of course i know i was making noise i was always a noise maker but look what the lord is using my voice for you know <laughs> blessed be god <laughs> ilikuwa Brian anasema ah kama hauna list sitaki napigwa sisi kila mtu kujeni hapa mkipitia hapa mmoja mmoja in my heart there is joy and celebration nilisamewa kwa encounter wacha na mimi but there is joy and celebration as i go there hata nikipigwa ninajua ziko peke yangu 
That is why when Paul was writing his letters, he used to tell the people, listen, 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 guys. The challenges you're going through, you're not alone. Other believers across the world are also going through the exact same challenges. When the believers are receiving the letter, they, are, they have been persecuted. social media, what you want to post, their church has rights. My church, my choice. Akuku wana hizo vitu. So mkiteswa mnajua ninyi tu mnateswa. Ukipoke akabarua kala nasema kuna wengine wanateswa kama ninyi unapitia hii majaribu. It encourages your heart to keep praying. You pray for them as you pray for yourself. So another way, if you're struggling to remember, surround yourself with some born again people. Some people who hold on to the same faith as yourself. Time does not allow me to go into the example of Elizabeth and Mary in Luke chapter 1. What a blessed truth that we find in that story. That Elizabeth had been visited by God before. Elizabeth, Mama John, the Baptist, yeah? So Elizabeth has been visited by the angel. No, not Elizabeth. The husband, Baba John, do visit you. So wakienda, of course, na meambiwa hata haiza kuongea. Siju elienda kasainia ajimke wake ya mambia leo. Me and you? Tumekumbuku wana God. Baby, me and you. <laughs> Is going down. I don't know what he, he signed to her. But anyway, the Bible says that Elizabeth became pregnant. Elizabeth was old. Okay, no. Both of them were old. And then Elizabeth was also barren. But the Lord visited her and put John inside of her 80-year-old body. All right? Elizabeth sat around. She had not experienced somebody like that before who had been visited by God like that. She had not, not in their village, not at all. She had not heard about it. So what Elizabeth did was she took option number one. She considered who she was dealing with. Does the Lord lie? Elizabeth was a believer. Not a believer like you and I know, but she was, she was faithful. The Bible starts by openness by talking about how she was even from the priestly lineage of Aaron. And they used to live devout lives. Her husband was a priest. They used to know God. They used to love him and serve him. So she sat down and considered, who is it that has promised? It is God. All my years I have never heard that God has been defeated. So what did she do? Because she knew there was going to be voices of people saying, Ati unabeba nini? Ukiwa miaka eight, yuko na mimba? Iyo ni tumor. Mm, enda uta, utolewe. She knew those voices would be there. So what did she do? The Bible says she went away by herself. And for about five months, she repeated the same song. She was saying, this is how the Lord has regarded my unfortunate situation. This is what God can do. This is what the Lord has done for me. This can only be God. When inaongezeka and I say, hey, wait, gain, this is God. Then the angel visited Mary. Mary, who was a virgin, had there been another virgin birth, there had never been, and to this day, there is never. Hakuna nyingine. When the angel visited Mary, it was important. Mary did not just hear the story from the news. It was the angel that said to her, by the way, I know what I am telling you is big news, but I want you to know that your relative Elizabeth is also with child. The angel is the one who is telling her, by the way, you can go to that one who was called barren and old. She's also expecting. So Elizabeth, Mary, Elizabeth took option number one, consider his greatness. Mary decided, as I consider his greatness, I will go and be with those ones who have been with God like me. Don't sit. Are you waiting for... Have you made pledges? Let me talk about Sunday for a minute. Have you made pledges and you're thinking you are crazy as you are putting that, down that pledge? And then you're sharing with people and say, Hey, 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 uko, toka, 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 araka, uko. Hmm, hmm, wana kuitia pesa wakati kama u. Surround yourself with people who believe. And people are telling you, Ati mtoto hako. Hey, amekuwa kifanyi yo mambo. Na ujoi mpeleka rehab. Ume mpeleka rehab akatoroka maranga tano. Eh, sasi juu utafanya ni uyo. Hakuna, hmm, 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 hmm. No, no, no. Surround yourself with people. Are there those kinds of people? Yes. Just ask around. Come to the fellowship. Share your issue. You'll find somebody telling you, by the way, me, I don't have a child. But I know about a cousin of a friend of mine who was going through exactly the same. And God. 
Jamani Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Surround yourself, tell your neighbor, neighbor. Surround yourself with some born again people. Not people who are singing about all oh, the downfall, people who are talking about oh how the world, people who are saying oh si dui nini. No, not those kinds of people. Surround yourself with people who actually believe and have seen God at work. Our time is up. Allow me to finish. By just sharing this one more thing with you. Maybe you're here and you're struggling. Maybe your struggling is with sin. And you're wondering how is it possible for me to remember? I want you to go back to the very beginning of time. Genesis chapter 3, the fall of man. I want us to read just a verse there. And the Bible says, Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and that it was a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband, who was also there with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made for themselves coverings. Eight. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden of Eden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord called to Adam and said to him, where are you? Remember the questions we were talking about that God asks? He's tearing you up. He's asking you questions so that he can stir you up. As you're seated right now where you are, if you hear questions in your spirit coming from God, he's tearing you up to actually come alive to think and consider exactly who it is that you're dealing with. He said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. And God asks him that question that all of us know is asking, who told you? Before we get into all of that, here's what I wanted us to share. That the fall of man, as we know it, um, in the book of Genesis chapter 3, what we've just read, it details how men fall. How, them, how man fell. That's how we're, we're going to put it. Um, it details how man fell. Yeah? And it also lines out an interesting thing that we are also able to trace back to Mark chapter 8 that we just read, that it was God's own initiative. I want you to remember when man fell, Adam and Eve, they made for themselves clothes and they covered themselves. Clothes that were made out of figs, fig leaves. I don't know if you've seen a fig tree. We, I saw my first fig tree in Nyeri not so long ago. We were beholding it with Pastor Paul. We had never seen it. Somebody pointed out, this is a fig tree. <laughs> Jesus. It was so hilarious. <laughs> I had never seen a fig tree before that mm. in my life. But we saw it. And as we were looking at it, it the leaves are not, they're not comfortable leaves. Si kama matawi andoma, kubo inakfunika. Nitu ndogo tudogo hivi tunakad, very prickly. And then Pia, it is not a long-lasting solution. See, after some time, zitakauka. I love Sasa. Naka sisal skirt. Una imagine kiva sisal skirt kila siku kienda kazi. It's very bad anyway. It's not a good thing. It's not a good look. Anyway, they had done that for themselves, and then they hid themselves. They were just there. They did not cry out to God. I want you to notice. They did not cry out to God after the fall. No. They were not like, oh God, we have sinned. God, where are you? Please, God, we have fallen. Oh God, no, they did not go into repentance and confession. No, no, no. When they fell, they covered themselves and they stayed to wait upon their own punishment. The Bible says God came to them in the cool of day. Charles Pagan says that God did not come to them in the terror of the night. Haku usiku to scare them already. Remember what my mother was saying to the DOIs when she came. Umefunga bedroom, lakini kuna manguo na huwa umeanika uko kwa ukuta. Kukiwa na giza inakani kama watu wanashuka hivi kwa. <laughs> no, God did not come to them in the shadows of the night. When we were in Zambia, we drove for many, many hours. There are days we were driving in the dead of night. To may drive for hours, you're the only vehicle on the road. And as you're going to Zambia, you're descending, you're going down south. So we're descending, I don't know if you're going to Because you are feeling it. And it's the night. I'm going to go to the road and I'm going to go to the road. I'm going to go to the road. And as you're driving, you're going to go to the road. You're going to go to the road and you're going to go to It's all in your head. Because the darkness has something. I'm going to go to the road. I'm going to go to the road. I'm going to go to the road. Sawa, sawa. The night has something of its own terror. God did not pick the night to come to the fallen man. God did also not come in the morning of day. Bukrata wa manyera. Anatokelezea nimekuja asubui. Six. As if one who was eager to come and punish man. 
He says, God also did not come in the noonday heat, as if one who was already angered and is ready to just come and punish them. Tukiwa shule tulikuwa tunasema ukipigwa kukiwa na jua ni uchungu kuliko ukipigwa hii masaa kumetulia tulia. So God is not, does not pick that time to come to them. The Bible says God comes to them in the cool of day. And that in itself just shows or opens up to us another attribute of exactly whom it is that we have believed. Remember in Mark chapter 8, it is Jesus that says, I have compassion on these people. When we go back to the fall of man, it is God that leaves heaven and comes to the people to have compassion on them. That he actually puts on them actual clothing and covering. More comfortable, more long-lasting than what they had made for themselves. When you consider God, you remember him clearly. When you remember who it is that you're dealing with, it changes you. It changes your life, changes your prayer, changes your relations, changes the way you live and move and have your being. Our time is up. I want you to just lift up your voice where you are right now and ask that the Lord would help you to remember him. Ask that the Lord would remove doubt and questions inside of you. That the Lord would tie you up. Come on, do not be silent. Do not be silent. Do not be silent. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Ask that the Lord would help you to remember him. To remember him. To remember him. To remember his greatness. Do not be like the disciples who had already seen God in action feeding the 5,000 and now they're asking themselves, is it possible for anyone to feed and satisfy these multitudes in the wilderness, though they had witnessed and experienced God, they forgot that it is possible for God to come through again. Let that not be said of you. Maybe you're here, you're struggling with sin. I want you to remember that God that rescued you the first time can rescue you again. Remember who you're dealing with. That God who was able to keep you this far in salvation is able to actually put the end to that struggle and bring you into a life of holiness and purity again. Consider if you're in lack right now. There are many times before you have been in lack. You have needed even more than you need right now. That same God that came through for you then is able to come through for you right now. We consider as a church that when we were building all the buildings before, that the Lord that we cried out to and he provided he is still the same one we are calling on today and he's still the one who will bring this to pass he has done it before this too he can do when we consider his greatness we remember his words in Zechariah as he's speaking to Zerubbabel and he says what is this mountain before you O Zerubbabel yet it shall become as a leveled plain what is this mountain standing before me when I consider the Lord I am stirred up in my faith to say that he who has leveled mountains before can level them even right now in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice, lift up your voice, lift up your voice, lift up your voice. Receive help from his sanctuary today in the name of Jesus. Receive a quickening in your spirit in the name of Jesus. Receive life in your spirit today in the name of Jesus. Receive rescue from the very throne of God in the name of Jesus. Receive pardon for sin in the name of Jesus. Receive help from God's hand in the name of Jesus. Receive Receive a restoration in the name of Jesus. Receive reconciliation in your family in the name of Jesus. Receive freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. He has done it before. Let your faith be stirred up to remember that he who did it then has done it and he will do it again. You might not have experienced it for yourself, but blessed be God, we have the collection of his actions throughout scripture. We have believers around us that can tell us God has done this before. He will do it again again for me. He has done it before. He will do it again for me. We were here in 2007, 2008, and he brought us through it as a nation. If we are thinking like we are worried, we shall not see if we consider exactly whom we have believed. We remember that the same God then, same God right now, he will carry us right through. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have faced difficulties economically again, and the same God who brought us through will bring us through even right there in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we receive your help today. Let our faith be stirred up. Oh God, we are quickened to see you, to consider you. We are quickened as you lead us to the right people, oh God, that will stir us up in the faith, that will help us to stand and live for you and bring glory and honor to your name. We thank you for every prayer that is made by your sons and daughters. Lord, we 
pray that it shall be so in the name above every name. The name of Jesus Christ, we pray, believing and trusting. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice. Celebrate the name of Jesus.